guys, and welcome to Sue's Slow Cooker and Easy today, where we're going to do a delicious slow cooker dish. First, we're going to take a couple of containers of this chicken broth, 37% less sodium, because, you know, chicken broth does have a lot of sodium in it, so. Anyway, ooh, flopping it all over the place. Liquid all over the place. So anyways, I'm going to take two of these and put it in my slow cooker. I love to use the slow cooker. There's nothing better than putting in a meal and forgetting about it for eight hours. Speaking of eight hours, I gotta put my crock pot on right now for eight hours. Because it's probably about eight or nine hours until hubby will want dinner. He doesn't like to eat right away when he gets home from work. He likes to relax a little bit. And it'll be about eight hours before he gets home from work anyways. So going to put in a couple containers of this chicken broth right here. This is the slow part, hence the slow cooker, because, you know, getting all the liquid out of here is going to be a slow process. Okay, here we go. Throw those in the old garbage there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these all-natural, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, the thighs, the dark meat, oh no, I should have pre-opened this. I hate opening these types of things. Um, the dark meat, okay, that wasn't too painful. Um, the dark meat is actually a lot more tender, and dark meat is me and hubby's favorite. We love chicken thighs. So what I'm going to do, have you guys figured out what I'm doing yet? Because I haven't. Maybe you guys could tell me. No, I'm kidding. I know what I'm doing, I think. Um, okay, so we're going to put these chicken thighs. I'm going to put about four chicken thighs in here. And we're just going to let those cook for right now. And while that's cooking, well, it's not going to cook too much right yet. I'm um, going to put the lid on and let it cook. And I'm going to wash my hands. Hold on one second. I'll be back. You just After handling chicken and stuff, definitely want to wash your hands. Okay. So then what we're going to do right now is I'm going to cut up some veggies and put them in this bowl, little plastic bowl that I use for everything. Um, I'm going to chop up one onion, and we're back from vacation, and that really sucks because there's always kind of like a little bit of depression vacation or coming home from vacation depression that you get when you come home from a vacation because... It's kind of a drag to have to come home, especially because I had to come home to a dirty house because I didn't clean it before I left. Like I said, things got a little bit too hectic, and I get, didn't get a chance to do that, so I came home to a dirty house. So when you have the coming home from vacation blues, <laughs> and you come home to a dirty house to boot, isn't always the most pleasant experience. So I'm going to chop up this whole onion, but I'm not going to show that whole process on camera. I'm just going to show you partial and then do the rest off camera so I don't have to waste too much time. So I'm going to put in a whole onion, and I'm going to put in some baby carrots. Hubby likes them chopped in kind of smaller pieces because he's a baby like that. So baby carrots for him aren't small enough. He has to go smaller. Oh, I know, I give my husband a bad time, but what are wives for, right? You have to give your husband a bad time, because they give you a bad time. Okay, so, like I said, again, I'm not going to chop all the carrots up on camera. I'm going to just do a few just to show you. And in case you guys haven't figured out yet what I am making, get a rib of celery, or uh, whatever you want to call it, a stalk of celery. Um, in case you guys haven't figured out what I'm doing yet, I had a lot of requests from you folks to put on, because I'm doing the request slowly but surely. I got a lot of requests from you guys to put on my favorite go-to meal and also comfort foods. Nice, warm, belly comforting, belly warming foods since it's the fall season. And one of my favorite recipes and one of my favorite comfort meals happens to be chicken and dumplings. 
They're so creamy. They're so good. And it's just the perfect cool fall day type of recipe. So this is kind of like two requests in one here. So I'm going to chop up my celery. I'm going to go off camera and finish chopping up my carrots, my rest of my onion. Probably put a little bit of garlic in this bowl. And also I have a lot of extra potatoes. You don't have to add potatoes to chicken and dumplings because you do have the starch from the dumplings. But like I said, I have extra potatoes. Just happen to. So I'm going to get the rest of this stuff cut up. And then I will come back and uh, show you a little bit more of what's going on after the chicken gets done cooking. So see you in a bit. Okay, so this uh, chicken has been cooking in the broth. The, the reason why I'm using a knife to get this lid off is because the lid, like the handle is broken off right here. So I go like this. It's a good way to do it. I always make do with what I have because... A lot of things are broken up around here, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, so the chicken has been cooking in this uh, chicken stock for about a couple hours now, and it's done. So I'm just going to take it out and put it on this plate over here, and I'm going to use that later. I'm not going to do anything except let it rest for right now. And so we got a nice chicken juice and everything to flavor that chicken broth even more than what it was. And these pieces are nice and tender because, like I said, I use the chicken thigh and the dark meat is always more tender, more flavorful in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions too. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so we got all that goodness and it smells like Thanksgiving in here. It smells so... Stick my nose in there. Mmm! That smells so good. It's like all that goodness, like I don't know. It's just scrumptious. Okay, so in this bowl, I have three cut-up diced potatoes. I didn't peel it. I have some baby carrots that I cut up. I have a whole onion, and I have a stalk of celery, and I put some garlic. I love garlic. Hubby loves garlic. And uh, so I put some garlic, and what we're going to do is we're just going to throw... Well, not throw gently drop so it don't splatter all over my veggies in the crock pot right now and make sure you get all the nice little pieces out of there real good I'm taping this by myself today because hubby's at work and this is a crock pot meal so it takes longer so anyways um but it's still easy so I can still have it on Sue's quick and easy because even though it takes longer it's still easy so I have my veggies in there and what I'm going to do since the stock, even though it's reduced sodium, it still has a lot of sodium in there and stuff. I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, salt-free Mrs. Dash to season it even more in here. Got to have a few dashes of dash. We're going to put some Italian seasoning. I like to put a little bit of Italian seasoning in my um, chicken and dumplings. i just take the lid off because I can't open that part. Okay. I like a little bit of Italian seasoning in my chicken and dumplings. And we're going to put some parsley flakes. And then we're going to put the lid back on and cover it up and let it cook some more. And then when it gets close to the end, I am going to, <coughs> excuse me, when it gets close to the, veg after the vegetables have cooked, I'm going to come back and show you what I'm going to do with the chicken and how I'm going to make my dumplings. So I will be back in a little bit. There's my parsley flakes. Okay, be back in a little bit. Okay, we're back in Sue's kitchen, doing it quick and easy style. Now, remember, this is episode 24, guys, so next episode 25 is my contest. Yay, I'm so excited. I love contests. Even if I'm not winning nothing, I like contests. Okay, so anyways, the vegetables are tender now, and I already cut up the chicken and threw it in there off camera because this is running a little bit long, so I didn't want to do take up all that time and do that on camera. Um, what you want to do now is you want to take two cream of something soups. Now, I felt like cream of mushroom and cream of chicken tonight. This is just the way that I do it. You don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I make chicken and dumplings. And again, no handle. So I have to do it this way. But it's, you know, it's okay. I make it work here in my kitchen. 
Okay. So, anyways, I'm going to add... It smells really good, too. Um, shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your mushroom soup. Eh. Trying to get all that mushroom stuff out of there. Oh, I need a spoon. Oh, dang it. Okay, here we go. We want to make sure we get all this goodness. <coughs> Excuse me. Ew, I just splattered myself. Out of the can. This is going to be a long video, I can tell already. I get a little long-winded sometimes, I guess. Okay, so that's the cream of mushroom soup. And this is the cream of chicken. Ooh, it just farted. Oh, it's still farting. Okay, so there's the cream of chicken, cream of mushroom going in there. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of flour and thicken it up a bit. But uh, I think that once you get the dumplings in there and you have a bowl of dumplings, um, and you also have your potato in here too, so I think that'll be plenty thick enough for us. You can always smash your dumplings and soak up the liquid in this soup. So there's a little tip for you. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a froggy in my throat again. Saddle up. Saddle up froggy and right on out of there. Okay. So, and this is my, my can of um, homestyle biscuits, or I guess this is Texas style. Um, I <laughs> didn't open it. I was going to open it off camera. But I figured just to give you guys a laugh, I will open it on camera because it always scares me when it opens. And I hate opening these things. I hate the pops. So I thought I'd tape it. Well, that is when it does pop. Okay, well, sometimes you'll open it like this and guess what? No pop. So this is what you do. You just take the end of your countertop <laughs> and give it a good whack and open that baby up. Okay, so now we have the biscuits. And we just put these on top like so. And that's going to be your dumplings. You're going to probably cook it for about 20 minutes on one side and then come back, flip them over 20 minutes on the other side, and then dinner will be served. And I will come back with a taste test after dinner is all done. Okay, see you in a few. Okay, well this is bubbling nicely, and the, I left it cooking a little bit longer than what I said I was going to let it cook, but I wanted to make sure that the biscuits on top were good and done. Look at that! That is a nice bowl of bubbling hot goodness. That's the yumminess monster right there. Yes, it is. You didn't think I could get a show done without making a corny joke now, did you? Okay. So I'm just going to sink my spoon into some of this. Yeah, this looks really good, doesn't it, honey? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I thought I'd be really nice and let hubby go first with the taste test this time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to add to this, a little shredded pepper jack cheese on top. Oh, yeah. Got to have cheese. Yes, please. Okay. So now we're going to do a little taste test, right, hubby? Mm -hmm. Okay. And while you're getting the camera adjusted to a different angle, I can let this cool down for a second because that is bubbling hot. Okay. It's good. I have to turn this light off, right? Goodness. Yumminess. We'll see here in a second. I also add a little bit of ketchup to mine sometimes. I'm an odd duck. I gotta blow on this. Mmm. Comforting, warming on a cold fall day. This stuff is grubbing. Try this. Super easy. And you'll like it. Mm -hmm.